get me into the office sooner. I've been working at a busy doctor's office for a while now, and scheduling new patient appointments is a huge part of my job. Our doc is seriously top-notch, and word has gotten around everyone wants to see him. As a result, new patient appointments for non-life-threatening issues are already being booked all the way into January. It's crazy. For patients with critical situations, we're doing our best to squeeze them in within two weeks, often as double bookings. It's a delicate balancing act, but we want to ensure those who need urgent care get it ASAP. The doc is shouldering an incredible workload, and honestly, he's on the verge of burnout. The constant pressure to see more patients, make more diagnoses, and save more lives is taking a toll. Despite our best efforts, some patients just can't wait even if their issues aren't life-threatening. They demand immediate attention, like their specialty isn't elective. I've lost count of how many times I've dealt with entitled patients. Take this one lady, for instance. We initially scheduled her appointment for the week of Thanksgiving in November. You'd think that's reasonable, considering our doc schedule. But nope, she called back a few days later, her voice dripping with condescension. That just won't do, she said, as if we were her personal concierge. Fine, we accommodated her. We moved her appointment to a double booking in October. I thought that would finally satisfy her. But then, just two days later, her primary care office called, insisting we see her right away. The kicker? Her condition wasn't even critical. It was astonishing. We bent over backwards to accommodate her again, solely as a courtesy to her referring physician. We squeezed her in just a week later this past week, to be exact. You'd think she'd be grateful, but no. When she arrived, she had the audacity to complain to the doctor himself. Unbelievable. And here's the kicker her emergency wasn't even medically necessary. It was purely cosmetic. Spider veins can be a legitimate concern in severe cases, but hers. Not even close. She'd been posturing as if her life depended on it, wasting our time and resources. I watched as she lectured the doctor, her tone indignant, as if we were somehow inconveniencing her. The doc's expression changed from empathetic to incredulous. He's seen it all, but this took the cake. That was the final straw. Our doc, usually a paragon of professionalism, had had enough. He erupted in a controlled but fiery outburst, his frustration boiling over. That's it, he declared, his voice firm but laced with exasperation. No more cosmetic procedure referrals. Anyone already scheduled for cosmetic appointments, cancel them. Send them elsewhere, he paused, collecting his thoughts. I've had it with entitled patients like this, Karen, he continued, shaking his head. We're here to save lives, not cater to vanity. I didn't dedicate my career to dealing with unnecessary drama, his words hung in the air. A stark reminder of the toll these incidents take. The office manager nodded in solidarity, already on the phone to inform affected patients and adjust the schedule. Our doc's stance was clear medical urgency would dictate our priorities, not cosmetic whims. Within days, our schedule underwent a seismic shift. Every cosmetic patient was either canceled or redirected. The door was shut, and a no-vacancy sign hung on cosmetic procedures. Our doc refocused on what truly mattered saving lives. He devoted himself to patients struggling to walk, fighting to keep their toes and feet from the ravages of disease. The urgency in his eyes returned, his passion for healing rekindled. Those cosmetic referrals from local docs, gone. The favoritism had ended. This Karen's entitled attitude had single-handedly revoked the privilege for everyone. The ripple effects were immediate. Locals with cosmetic issues now faced a daunting two-hour journey to the city for treatment. Specialties once readily available in our community were now a distant memory. Some might say our doc was harsh, but I saw it differently. He reclaimed his purpose, prioritizing those truly in need. The entitled few would no longer dictate his schedule or compromise his values.